Welcome back to Chemistry 1510 Video Notes in Chapter 6. We're going to talk about heat sinks. So we've just talked about um, specific heat and heat capacity, and now we're going to use those things in a more complex problem. So let's pretend that we have a, let's say maybe a cup of water. So we've got a cup of water, and then we have a piece of metal. If the metal is hot, and the water is room temperature, what's going to happen when we put the metal in the water? Well, that metal is going to release its heat to the water, right? and then the water is going to absorb that heat. And what we can do is say that the heat lost by the metal is equal to the opposite sign of the heat gained or absorbed by the water. So what this means is there's a transfer of heat from one object to another. The magnitude of the transfer is going to be the same. So if, if the uh, metal loses five kilojoules, then the water is going to absorb five kilojoules. And that's not always perfectly true, but we're going to assume it to make sure that our um, calculations are easy. Because other things could have absorbed the heat, right? The surrounding air, the vessel, or the cup that the water is in, but we're going to assume that there was no heat lost to anything else. We're just going to assume that the water absorbed all the heat. So let's look at um, a problem that uses this idea. So in this problem, we have a piece of aluminum and it's used as a heat sink. The aluminum is 73 point, or sorry, 71.3 degrees and it's dropped into a cup of water with 100 grams of water and that water is 25 degrees Celsius. Then at the end, the temperature rises to 27.4. It's asking what the heat capacity is for the aluminum. And so when we want to solve this problem, you see heat capacity for aluminum and you think, okay, I know I want to solve this for aluminum. And you start thinking, okay, what variables do I have? Do I have Q? Do I have F? temperature, do I have C? So if we kind of analyze this equation versus what we have, we have the temperature initial of the aluminum. The temperature final of the aluminum is a little bit harder to see, but it's the 27.4, and we'll get to why that is in a moment. The problem is, is we're looking for the C and we also don't know the Q. Well, you can't solve one equation that has two variables. It doesn't work that way. So we can't go about just automatically calculating the heat capacity for the aluminum. What we need to do is figure out what Q is first. And so we're gonna use the idea that if we have a cup of water that has the piece of aluminum in it, that the heat lost by the aluminum, so the Q for the aluminum, is going to be equal to the heat gained by the water. So we're going to use the information we have for water to find the Q for water. One second, I'm going to put a little water down here so we can keep them straight. So let's write down what we know. We know we have 100 grams of water. We know that the starting temperature was 25 degrees Celsius. And we know the T final was 27.4 degrees Celsius. So if we put in the mass of water at 100 grams we don't know S, it wasn't given to us in the problem, so we have to go look it up. Remember, it's 
and sometimes you'll see our textbook leave off the four so I'll leave it off here just so we can see that it doesn't matter really very much in the grand scheme of things and then our delta T is 27.4 as our T final and 25.0 as our T initial so we go through all of that, we round our final answer to two significant figures because the delta T ends up being two sig figs, and you get a positive 1.0 times 10 to the third joules. So that's the Q of water. So what this means is the water absorbed 1 times 10 to the third joules. So if the water absorbed that much, then logic illustrates that the piece of metal should have released that much. And by convention, uh, released when you have um, heat being released that's going to be a negative sign and when heat is absorbed you're gonna have a positive sign so when we solve for the heat capacity of aluminum remember we were going to use that Q equals C Delta T equation and up here we said we, we had two variables and one equation but now we have the Q for the aluminum. The Q for the aluminum is negative 1.0 times 10 to the third joules. We're solving for C and we have delta T. So delta T is T final minus T initial. And let's talk about why the T final is 27.4 degrees Celsius. So when we look at uh, these kinds of problems, before the aluminum ends up in the water, it was a higher temperature. It was 71.3 degrees. And then when it says in the problem that the water temperature rose to 27.4 degrees, that means that the aluminum and the water temperature came to equilibrium, they came to be the same temperature. And that was the final temperature for the water and the aluminum. So that means that we can use 27.4 down here in our T final. So we do a quick division and we end up with 23 joules per degree Celsius. So this is a typical heat sink problem. The most common mistake in these problems is to leave out the negative here. And if you leave out the negative here, then you'll accidentally end up with a negative C, which is not possible. So we want to make sure that we remember that the aluminum is uh, releasing the heat, and that means that it's going to be a negative value. So let's stop here. As always, thanks for your attention. This is Katoni signing out.